those two colors are going to come together in there and hopefully give us a cool look. Maybe a small mouth color. I also busted out another puck. What's happening, Fish and Friends? Welcome to another episode. We're back out in the garage. You know what that means? We are making baits. Specifically, we're going to be making some Ned rigs. Now, I've been out here messing around with it at night, trying to get some, uh, some patterns and some colors. Things that I like put together and I've come up with a few that I like, but I want to do something different today and I want to mess with some laminate. Now a laminate, if you don't know, you use the uh, the dual injector and it's going to be two colors. So those, you know, stick baits or, or Ned rigs where there's like one color on top and one on the bottom. That's what I want to do today. So the mold we're working with is... Actually, I just noticed I, uh, I dripped coffee on me this morning. This is, this is why I can't have nice things. So this is the mold. This is uh, from Do It. Of course, I partnered up with the good folks from Do It this year. This is the mold, I think the color, like their Midwest something mold, I don't know, Ned Rig mold, I'll link it down below. Um, but it's a cool little mold. This is the type of plastic that it produces. Now this works perfect uh, on those EWG Ned Rig hooks that I've made the, from obviously also from Do It. But any sort of Ned Rig uh, hook, mushroom type style hook, works great on these. How long are they? Survey says just over two and a half inches. The old Ned Rig's perfect for spring coming up, so I figured what better time, make a few of these, and of course we're gonna do a giveaway. So enough yapping, let's go through the steps and make some. Oh yeah, and I did get a bigger microwave. This is a thousand watt. Uh, that was the old one, the little guy over here. We'll keep them both in case I'm baiting with some other person over here. By that I mean making baits. That way we've got a couple different microwaves, but uh, this one, yeah, just didn't have the power, a little 700 watt. You can see the size difference there. This does take up more room. I don't have as much room to work here, but 1000 watt definitely uh, is a little bit more powerful. All right, three minutes wasn't quite enough. Put it on for a couple more minutes. When you've got two in there, it does take quite a bit longer, but let's figure out what colors we wanna do. Could remelt some of these that I've already used, but I don't wanna do that. Let's create something new. This is one that I've been wanting to try. Let's see, was it here? Yeah, motor oil. I wanna see what their motor oil looks like. Uh, it's an old color I used to throw on. What should we laminate it with? Since it's spring, maybe we should do some red. We'll see how that looks. Okay, after a few minutes in the old microwave, that's what it looks like. Instead of being milky, it's kind of this like, I don't know, sort of translucent color. That'll continue to get uh, completely clear as we heat it up. You can still see it's kind of jelly-y, not where we need it yet. So this is a good time to add the color though. I like to add it slowly as I go. Okay, definitely getting an interesting color there. Not necessarily the kind of brownish green. Oh, maybe, we'll see. We'll, we'll get it a little bit thinner and see. All right, we'll put some red in here. Red's pretty strong, so we're not gonna go with a ton. That might have been a little bit aggressive on the red. I should have probably done a few dots first. Okay, yeah, not gonna lie. Put a little bit too much in. That's a, that's a very aggressive red, not, not gonna lie. We need to decide what kind of flake we want right here. So you can see instead of being like actual like dots of glitter, it's like hairy looking stuff. Okay, our motor oil is really close to being done. It was just under 350. So this is what I'm gonna put in here, some of these little black, like hairy glitter looking stuff. You can see what it looks like there, like hair instead of regular glitter. So I'm just gonna put in a little bit of that just to kind of give it some depth. It'll give it kind of a 3D, you know, at least you can see the dimension in there of it. See, and a good way to tell what it's kind of gonna look like is to put that on your knife, just a thin coat of it. Okay, we're at 357 on this, we're good to go. Grab some of this motor oil -y goodness. Hold pressure down on it just a little bit. Make sure it got everything filled in. And then when you bring it up, make sure you fill that sprue just like that. Because as this continues to heat up, this cold metal is going to pull that plastic stuff in. See what's pulling that down in the hole there? It's taking that plastic and sucking it all the way down in. So you just want to make sure you top it off. And I waited too long to do that because I was getting the camera in uh, in order there. All right, while the red's cooking here, let's demold this. And these molds do have a little deal here. Uh, instead of trying to pry it open, you just take your knife, put it in there, just twist it and it pops that open. And, oh, those came out looking pretty sweet. I like that. It does have just a tinge of that green to it. I wish it had a little bit more of that kind of green hint to it to be kind of the old motor oil. Now, another thing, I like to use the vise instead of the, the grippy clamp things, these. I use these, but I would say get a really good pair. Otherwise, just get one of these cheap uh, little clamps. This just clamps onto my, my table here. Nothing too expensive. I think it was like 25 bucks on Amazon. Uh, but I like you can put it in there, tighten it up, and you don't have to worry about any sort of leaks or anything. Works well. All right, this red is ready to go too. Let's, let's just shoot one plain just with the red itself before we do a laminate. Let's see what it looks like. 
In we go, push down, good speed, constant pressure. Make sure you hold a little bit, make sure there's no air bubbles. And pull that out, make sure you top that off so it pulls that extra plastic in. Back to the vat with the excess. Now remember on these dual ones, I have a lot of people ask if these have like a locking deal on them. They do not, but just be careful as you push it down, you can either hold it here if it's not too hot, or as you're pushing it down, I think this is already hardened in there. As you push it down, just watch to see when that little uh, tip starts to push out like that, and then stop. All right, let's see what this red looks like. I've got stuff warming up again because I think we're gonna try a laminate uh, just to see what it looks like anyway. I'm not I'm not completely sold on this red. I did get a little, uh, little taste of it there. Look at that. That's red, that's definitely red. We'll see what this looks like when they kind of merge together when you do the laminate. Now the tough part with the laminates is making sure you get both of these colors at the same heat, the same temperature. That's our motor oil. It's definitely browner in person, kind of looks orange on the camera, but that's our red. Uh, yeah, no mistake, and that red is definitely red. So we're gonna put these two together, see what they look like. I really like that one. That turned out to be one of my favorites. That's what happens when you mix my smoky purple with some black and blue, interesting, versus the regular black and blue, I like that. This was also a favorite. I don't, I don't know what to call it, looks cool. The time has come, we are at perfect uh, temperature on both of these to shoot our laminate, so, and get both of these next to each other and make sure these are clear, they are. I draw up my laminate and I have to use this little plate. This is actually what splits my colors when I put it in. Put this perpendicular to my mold like that. Draw some of these up. Make sure there's no air, just like so. Over to the mold we go. Again, same thing as before, constant pressure, push down, fill the mold. Those two colors are gonna come together in there and hopefully give us a cool look. Dump the excess back in there. Again, watch your tips. When you see the tips start to move down away from the injector, that's when you stop, just like that, so you don't lose your tips down in there. Just so you can see what the injector is doing here, you take this apart, because obviously you have to clean out your, uh, your splitter deal here. And that's what it looks like. That's the two colors coming together and then merging to make your, uh, your laminate in the plate. So get that cleaned out, put it back together with the old wing net, and we're ready to use it again. All right, the moment of truth here. Let's take it out and see what it looks like. Okay, interesting. So we can see on this side, that's the brown side, kind of hard to see in the light, but once you flip that over, we've got red on the other side. That actually looks, actually looks pretty cool. Hold on. All right, get over here where the light's a little bit better. I'm gonna give you the progress. So that motor oil black flake, flip it over, and it's definitely red. That's actually kind of neat looking. Not, uh, not something I would normally fish, but you can see those laminate lines are nice and clean in there. As long as you have them at the same temperature, Good even pressure, look at that. Perfect, perfect on the laminate lines. Those turned out sweet. Nice hard lines, that's what you want, where the pumpkin's nice and hard on one side and then the you know the red hard on the other side so you can see two very distinct different colors. That turned out pretty cool. Let's, let's make some more. All right, I changed our colors up just a little bit. I put some gunmetal and black in our red and then in our motor oil, I put a little bit of green highlight and then just a little bit of the black like flake stuff. Maybe this will maybe this will spice it up and make it look a little cooler. It'll run over a little bit, but it all hardens. See what I mean? Not an issue when it overflows. It, it hardens and it cleans up really well. Also, I have a little pile down here. Make sure you clean your pile of stuff up when you're done. And you always know when people have kids because when you find crushed goldfish, parents buy them for the kids. And the kids leave them all over and the parents end up eating the rest of the goldfish. You're looking in the cupboards like, I need a snack. Oh, goldfish sound great. I'm telling you, kids, it's a bad habit. Uh, don't be getting all the goldfish because they're too addicting. All right, let's see what this color looks like after we changed our color slightly. Okay, interesting. So by adding that black flake in the gunmetal, we definitely got a deeper, darker red. You can see all the flake and stuff in there now. And then our motor oil, I added just a little bit of that iridescent green to it and some of the, the solid black flake. Not as see-through. Interesting, but our lines are still nice and solid. You can see the, the very distinct red side and the brown side, all of them turned out looking really nice. And again, I was getting the, my plastics up to just above 350, and those all shot absolutely beautifully. All right, so I'm gonna try something different here. I've got some of my old plastics that I had melted down. I think I've showed you this before, but I save all the pucks of like old colors. Throw them in here, you can use them later. I melted some old uh, like black and blue, black and blue flake uh, type stuff. See what we can get coming up here. Now I did add a little bit more uh, of the Plastisol into it. And then I added some stabilizer. Anytime you use some of this old Plastisol uh, and remelt it, you want to use some of that stabilizer so you're not overcooking it and trashing it. But this is uh, this is going to be kind of an interesting color. Let's mix that with some of that uh, that brown, maybe. That is a cool color. We got the green highlights in it. 
the black and blue purplish. Oh yeah. Okay, we're at temperature. I should have done this before, but I add just a little bit of watermelon brown into this. Um, look at that. Definitely more of a green hue to it now. With just a little bit of that watermelon in there. That's pretty cool. I like that. We do another split. I'm gonna do something a little bit different this time. Two different colors. Hold the pressure on. Make sure we top off our sprue there. That's it, that's all there is to it. The soft plastic making is not hard, but it sure is a heck of a lot of fun. All right, this mold should be cool off, let's see. So this is our, like almost a green pumpkin, and that's almost exactly what it looks like now. Oh, y'all. Almost a green pumpkin with a little bit of iridescence, some black flake. Oh, and you flip it around, look, it's like a black and blue, like with a dark purple. Oh my goodness, talk about one of my favorite laminates I've made, that thing is awesome so it's kind of funny we went from that brown and red and then i doctored up my red with some gunmetal uh gray and the other color black flake i put in there then i put some more black flake in the brown added some green iridescent you can see and that's what we've got for laminates i'm telling you all laminates are fun all right fish friends it's the next morning i ended up getting snowed out of my garage yes a little mini snowstorm came in and of course i had my garage like halfway up and a bunch of snow and icy stuff was blowing in so had to call it quits but today the laminate soft plastic pouring so that green pumpkin this is the sprue this is what you pull out and then that black blue pumpkin this is or uh, black blue flake this is a color i was messing with later after i did some of that red and such it's so cool how many different ways, and like once you start getting into the soft plastic stuff, uh, you really get a love for it. If you like creating things anyway, I, I could nerd out with this stuff all day. So, uh, of course, I'm gonna do a giveaway. I always do a giveaway with this stuff. I'm gonna sign this here in a second and uh, and give you a little mixture. Let's take a look at, at what we did. So, first off, we created some of those red Ned Rig. I think these might work during spawn, maybe a small mouth color. They're kind of dirty now, sorry I dropped them on the floor, but. Uh, Small mouth color, maybe even like walleye. I don't know if people use Ned rigs for walleye or anything, but kind of a bright color like that, um, I think will do good on beds or just, you know, visually uh, in the spring. I don't know, we'll see. I've never used an all red plastic, so I will throw some of those in. I also made that old school motor oil color. Now this isn't quite the motor oil like that I was thinking of. Um, you know, it seemed to be darker back in the day and have like a green sheen to it. So when you'd move it, it would go from like that dark motor oily, you know, to green. But this is still a really cool color. I put that hairy black flake in there. Uh, I posted some pictures on Instagram and people were saying, Debo, were you shaving when you made these plastic? It looks like beard shavings in there. Heck, maybe it is. Maybe you got a little piece of Debo in these. Who knows? And then we started messing with the laminates. So making these two colors, two different parts. So you can see the, the hairy brown up there on the top. And as you turn it, we get into that red color. Good hard lines, as long as you have your plastics at the same heat. Um, so I always aim to get as close to 360 as I can uh, on that first pour. And then, you know, 350-ish to 360 every pour thereafter, because your mold starts heating up and such. But as long as you try to keep both of those plastics at the same, uh, the same temperature, seems to be working. Now there's other channels to watch out there too. All kinds of people are doing soft plastics. Learn from others, you know, uh, of course, Marling, uh, The Bait Cave, Mr. Nick Rundle, World's Worst Fishing, uh, Arthur, Fish Daddy, if you follow him on uh, Instagram. All kinds of people doing really cool soft plastic stuff. So go check them out as well, but uh, I'm loving it. Now after that, I started altering the colors a bit. So uh, in the red, I added some gunmetal, which is like gray, and then some black flake. So you can see there, that red looks different. It's a much darker red compared to the red that we started off with. You can see how adding that flake and mixing it in definitely makes a difference. And then the, the, uh, the brown, to give it a little bit of a green sheen, I put just a little bit of green highlight powder in there just to kind of give it a little bit of that, you know, highlight green kind of color change to it it's real subtle so speaking of altering i was almost out of that brown that that exact brown i went from this so that brownish motor oil with that hairy flake in it and i had a puck of uh some old green pumpkin i don't know what all was in there i added that to the brown and this is the color i came up with i also busted out another puck of some like black and blue flake uh, i think there might have been some june bug in there too and made this one so this is, again, using those same colors, altering them, and coming up with something like this. And this color, this was one of my favorites, actually, of the night. Those laminates look so cool. When you get them like that, where you can see that half and half, they look so fun. So I'm going to throw a little bit of each of these into a bag. Hold on. 
I had to sign the old package. Some fishing friend is going to get this. I'm going to put a bunch of these in there. Go catch some toes or at least some dink something. So I'll put that in there. Comment below and let me know what type of soft plastics you want to see me make next. Um, it really is something that once you start doing it, you want to just keep doing it. Last night I was like, what can I turn this color to? Or what two colors will go together the best? What, what else can I add to make this look interesting? You know, you've got sparkle, glitter, highlights, all kinds of stuff you can get into. It's super addicting. So huge shout out to the folks that do it. Of course, uh, they partnered up with me. I will leave my link below for everything that I talked about. And tonight's subscribe fish and friend is going to be Arthur Fish Daddy. Arthur, uh, he's always on my lives, always supporting me, as nice as a guy uh, as you can meet. He actually sent me my Bluetooth setup. Uh, hopefully you will see me using that uh, the next time I have a live so I don't have to have the corded uh, ear thing. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a lifesaver. So Arthur, thank you for being a subscribe fish and friend uh, and thank you everybody else who has supported me for so long, continues to watch my videos. I appreciate it a ton. Uh, again, comment below and let me know what type of mold you want to see me make next some sort of soft plastics jigs whatever it is if you like the tackle making stuff let me know because i definitely want to do more of these but uh that's enough for me uh it's early in the morning everybody is still asleep here uh, i think it's like 6 30 uh, so i got coffee i'm gonna get some other shots of this and uh and edit so i love y'all thank y'all for watching and until next time mm -hmm.